Hello again, I am Blunty, and it is stinking hot in Sydney right now where I live. We're in the middle of a bit of a heat wave, it's getting to ridiculous temperatures, and I'm just about to pass out. So I've decided today to review an item that will help me beat this heat. And it's this wristwatch. Well, actually, it's not even the wristwatch because that is actually the, the iPod Nano I'm wearing as a wristwatch. And I'm not going to go into whether I think that's just like a turbo geeky thing to do and how practical it is to have a wristwatch that's difficult to read in direct sunlight and all that sort of stuff. But the, the, the market for making bands for these things has exploded. There's literally dozens and dozens and dozens of, of these cheap and nasty little bands made out of just all kinds of crap. And a lot of them are silicon and just rubbery, awful things. But this one is actually a nice high quality one. It's made from real leather. It's made from stainless steel and it's built tough as hell. But what is the secret behind this wristwatch band for the iPod Nano that's going to help me beat the heat? Well, let me show you. It involves having to remove it from your wrist. You remove the iPod Nano from it and a ba-bam. Can you see that peculiar shape of the big slab of stainless steel that is holding the iPod Nano securely? To the band that is the ultimate secret for how a wristwatch band can help you beat the heat because you need to use it in combination with something that is deeply loved by any true Aussie out there and that is a big old case of beer and I have selected a case of world-class collection beers from all over the world ten of them as a matter of fact and I'm going to drink every last one of them while I review this wristwatch and we're going to start here with Sapporo Japanese beer now watch Hook that under there, just like you do any other bottle opener. And if I can do it, I can't see because I've got the light shining in my eyes so you can see what I'm doing. A bam. A wristwatch that helps you beat the heat of summer. Every Australian needs one of these. That's actually not a bad beer at all. Mm. Oh, very refreshing. I will admit that reviewing a watch band that is also a bottle opener is a fairly flimsy excuse for drinking and drinking and drinking on a really hot day, but I'm Australian. I don't need an excuse to drink and drink and drink on a hot day. These watch bands, by the way, are made by Richard Tracy Brand. That's literally what they call themselves, Richard Tracy Brand. It says right there. You can get them from ThinkGeek, apparently. And he actually sent me in three different samples of it. Wait, more there. This is your classic style. Nice plain leather band, stainless steel construction in silver, stainless steel colour naturally. And you got my personal favourite and the one I've actually been wearing as you can tell because it's got a little wear thing in it from where I was wearing it. Um, is the Ninja Star which is the same again, stainless steel but it's it's powder coated or something or it's made black and the and the, the little, what do you call that thing, clasp, clippy, clippy thing. Buckle, uh, little buckle is also black. So. And then, of course, you've got what I call the gay one. It's not especially gay, it's just a little too fancy for me. The, the leather has this sort of crocodilian sort of scale pattern on it, which is, I don't know, classy, I guess, but I, I'm not a very classy guy, so that's, that's the gay one to me. I'm sweating too much, I need more beer. Don't know whether it counts as ironic or not, but this Sapporo beer, which is apparently Japanese, is actually made in Canada. Very, very Japanese country is Canada. No, wait. French. French is the thing Canada is. Not Japanese at all. So this Japanese oldest brewery is in Canada. Somebody's lying to me. Mm. I forgot to refocus the camera, didn't I? So that's the problem with, with, with using the, the, uh, the, the 60D SLR for filming these type of videos. Is it doesn't continually autofocus like my other camera does, so I have to pay attention to where the focus is, and it gets more difficult to pay attention to where the focus is when you're drinking beer. Alright, Japanese beer is done time for the next beer in my around the trip world drinking of beer experiment review, thorough review of a bottle opening wristwatch strap thing for the iPod. And it is Lombra, one of my other favourite beers, as a matter of fact, and unlike the Japanese beer which was made in Canada, this German beer is made in Germany. So, and once more, one pop and you can't stop. It really does work like a bottle opener. Funny about that. Actually, you know what I could do in the in the testing process is read what the um, 
what the box says about these various beers. Because I bought the, the beers as a sort of box set of beers around the world kind of thing, even though like half of them are German, which makes sense. Germans do excellent beers. Um, so what does it say on the back? Well, how does it describe the Lohenbrau beer? There's nothing lowbrow about the Lohenbrau. Oh, sweet Jesus. I need to punch the person who wrote these. I wonder if they're all... We'll get to the rest. I'll read them all. There's nothing low about the Lohenbrau. Not only does it pour well, but it's a liquid, it should. Smell great. It smells like beer. Look good. Yeah, it looks like beer. And taste brilliant. Can't argue with that. It has a nice blue label with a lion on it. That's the truth, but... You know, there's a vast difference between whoever wrote the back of this box and the type of jerk-offs you see describing different kinds of wines where they're, oh, I can smell plums, yes, plums, yes, petroleum, and petroleum, and a distinct backwash of apple vomit. No, it's, with beer, it's just, it's got a blue label with a line on it. If I'm going to do this reading the um, back of the box thing, I should do the, <coughs> the first beer which is the Sapporo, the Japanese beer from Canada. Uh, where is it? Sapporo is brewed with state-of-the-art equipment using natural ingredients. It's a moderately light, refreshing and crisp beer that tastes sweet, floral and malty. So that's more of what I expected from the bottle top. Not like, it's got a blue label with a line on it. One more sentence. And the bottle is very tricky to hold with chopsticks. Ha <laughs> ha! Informative and racist. Nice work. Wait, is it racist to suggest that the Japanese people would drink their beer trying to hold it with chopsticks? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's definitely racist. German beer all gone. Time for the next beer. And it is Stella. Stella. Or Stella. A trois, as I like to call it, a Belgian beer. And there's probably a World War II joke waiting to happen about drinking a Belgian beer right after a German one, but as I keep saying, this really isn't about the beer, it's about the uh, the bottle opener that I'm reviewing here. And I wonder if the Polish make any good beer. That's actually refreshing. A lot lighter than the German beer. Belgium is Germany light, really. Stella Artois, a beer of such distinction and quality, we just have to be serious about it. Malty on the mid palate. Stella has a creamy aroma and a hint of citric fruitiness. The guy who wrote these has a hint of citric fruitiness, I think. It's worth noting, however, that this Belgian beer doesn't actually get imported from Belgiumia. It is, in fact, brewed here, in Australia, by Foster's, who make my least favourite beer out of all Australian beers. Foster's is not Australian for beer. I don't care what the ads in America tell you. We don't drink it here. It's piss. It does, of course, occur to me that I probably should have eaten something today at all before I committed myself to rapidly drinking 10 beers. The box suggests I enjoy these responsibly. Fuck you, box. Irresponsible it is. Ow. That landed on my toe. Belgian beer done. Now, for an next beer. A beer I've not tried before. This one's called Chang. Guess where it's from. No, Thailand. Once more, the ever-reliable watch-strap beer opener. See, the first time I say the word reliable, it doesn't actually open the beer first try. That's just fate talking for you, really. I was asking for it. Well, right, let's see how Thailand does a beer. I don't like that. Let's see what the box says. Chang from Thailand. This ain't no holiday beer, folks. Chang is the real thing. One of... Is there a difference between holiday beer and real beer? Apparently. 
uh, one of Thailand's most popular beers is full of taste and flavor. That is a fact. It is a lot more flavorful than the Belgian beer I had. The Belgian beer was light and refreshing. This one's, it's got a little body to it, I guess, if I was going to use one of those wine snob nerds. Body. Uh, where was I? Plus, it has two elephants on the... Really? It has two elephants on the label. You can't go wrong. Another animal on the label joke from the douchebag who wrote the blurbs on the back of this box. He needs to be fired. They... Who who, who makes this box? Who? Uh, available exclusively. Dan Mackey's Looker. Safeway. BWS. So, it's put together... All these are uh, Woolworths owned companies. And, no, that's not the same Woolworths you got in America. Or the one that closed down in Britain is different Woolworths. But... Woolworths need to hire me to write the blurb on the back of this beer box. <sighs> See, I'm not even sure how to describe that flavor, but I could still do a better job on the back of the box than that douchebag. <clears throat> Tasty, though. I'll be buying that again. Two interesting facts I know about Thailand, which is where this delicious beer comes from, is that it used to be called Siam, and its capital is Bangkok which is the funniest name of any place in the world ever. Bang. Cock. And another beer to open with the ever-progressing experiment in testing whether this thing can actually open lots of lots of beers. So now is the... Uh... Well, that's disappointing. The strap just broke, and I'm, I'm talking about torn here. Let me focus the camera in here. Literally tore. Now, I was fairly impressed with this product. Focus. When I can tear leather, that's not a good sign. I'm on beer five. So, let's grab another one. We'll go through another few beers and see if this one tears as well. This is a Bitburger beer, which is, I'm going to guess, from Germany. Let's have a look down here. Come on, where does it say? Where does it say? Uh, yes, Germany. German. It's German beer. Eh, Bitburger is a crisp pilsner. I wouldn't say crisp, quite honestly. Enjoyed from the glass, well it's glass bottle, to experience the array of pleasurable aromas. It smells like beer. And this classic blend of hops and bitterness tastes as good as it smells. It does taste as good as it smells, but then again, it doesn't smell like a particularly terrific beer. Another beer down. Another beer to open with the second watch trap, because I managed to break the first one. So, we'll get another lip there. So, it occurs to me at this point that some of these may be twist top bottles, but I'm going to open all of them with the bottle opener anyway, because... What's a bottle opener to do if not to open bottles, despite the fact that they're meant to be twisted off? That bottle wasn't twist off, there's no thread or anything. Hmm. This is... Unpronounceable. Ottinger. There's a big O, little E, T, T, I, N, G, uh, Pils. Probably a Pilsner of some type, from Germany, I'm guessing. Yes, it's a German beer. And it's made in Germany. It's important into Australia. So, earlier on in the experiment, there were a lot of beers that said they were made elsewhere, but weren't made elsewhere. They're just licensed from where they were originally made, then made here. But this was not. This is German beer, again, from Germany. And... Uninspiring. Ottinger Pilsner. Yeah, I was right. It was a Pilsner is a pale golden color is refreshingly crisp and dry with a balanced hoppy finished 
and being from Germany also has a notoriously efficient work ethic. Oh yes, Ottinger. Hey, more racism, because, you know, the Germans are efficient at working and doing nothing but work and invading Poland, but mostly working. So we've come to the portion of the drinking experience where reruns of that 70s show become very amusing. I've just caught myself laughing out loud at several jokes in that usually fairly banal sitcom. Although that uh, Laura Prepon, I think her name is, the, the, the girl who plays the redhead in the show, the main love interest of the main character of the show, is forever the hotness. Sober or drunk, she is smoking. You know it's true. Every corner I put into it, I get half back. That's a 50% profit. It's hat wearing time. Mmm, <sighs> noodles. Mm. <sighs> okay, we have had enough of efficient German beer for now. And to New Mexico, I think. Corona. A Mexican beer which should be a mystery to no one who has ever drank a beer. Unfortunately, I'm a complete dumbass and I did not buy any limes to go with my Corona. The watch band bottle opener thing still working a charm, of course. But the Corona is just not good without a lime in it. And I don't want to hear any of this lemon talk either. Corona has to have a lime in it. And, uh, hey, it's actually made in Mexico. Mexican beer made in Mexico. Imported by Foster's. Again, my least favorite of the Australian beer companies, but at least I didn't make it. You know, so it tastes like beer and not cold urine. I don't know what it is about Corona, but it needs lime. It's like the only beer on the planet that is better with citrus in it. It's ridiculous. It's Mexican magic or some shit. Time for the next beer. And I'm thinking it's high time for an Australian beer. This one is Dry Dock. It's a lager. And wait, 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 wait. There it goes. Despite being a twist top, the watch strap bottle opener still works a charm, which of course is the entire reason I'm doing this video and drinking so many beers all at once. Dry Duck. This locally brewed lager has a smooth aftertaste, true, but before that it has a refreshing dry flavour, true. So that means while it's wet, it's a beer that's also dry, those crazy Australians. Seriously, I really, really need to find out who wrote the blurbs on the back of that box and beat him until his throat explodes. Oh, it's gone all fuzzy. Beer, um... What is it, eight from ten beers around the world that I've been chugging down in the last few hours to test this, the beer opening watch band designed for the iPod Nano. Actually, this is the second one I've tried because I somehow managed to break the first which was either a manufacturing flaw or my own incompetence or I don't know what but I'm reluctant to believe it is an inherent flaw in these because when you look at them they do look well built so they are you know there's plenty of decent quality leather here the stitching looks really solid I mean they're made from stainless frigging steel but the fact that I did manage to break one while opening what the third or fourth beer does give me pause for concern but so far this one is wearing no wear and tear because I'm being a little more conscious about where I put the leverage point for instance I mean you can break anything if you try hard enough but still yeah, we'll see it is a brilliant idea though I mean this isn't what you're going to be using to open every beer you ever have for the rest of your life it is a watch band that, I mean, it would be horribly inconvenient for you to remove your watch and the iPod data from the watch band every time you wanted to open a beer. 
this is one of those just in case kind of inventions. This is when somebody says, this beer isn't a twist off at a party. Who's got a bottle opener? Instead of hunting around in the kitchen drawer digging for bottle opening gold for 15 minutes, desperately trying to find the bottle opener that you swear you had last week. This is sitting on your wrist there waiting for that emergency. And I know there's, I know at least five ways to open a beer without a proper bottle opener using like lighters or other beer bottles and stuff like that. But still, it's handy to know that it's sitting there waiting for you to use it. Just having it there and that cool fact of going, hang on, my watts can save the day. There you go. It's kind of cool. And if you're going to buy a watch band to use an iPod Nano as a watch, it might as well have more functions than just a piece of plastic. As far as I'm concerned. <coughs> that was weak. Should have heard the one I did before I turned the camera back on. Epic. Shaped the walls. The windows broke. The neighbours knocked on the wall. It was extraordinary. You know, I had a friend. I still have a friend, but... She's a long way away right now. Used to love growing this part of my beard, the little bit that douchebags don't shave to uh, make that little soul patch thing. She used to grab it. She used to like use me as a uh, as a muppet or as a, a ventriloquist dummy. Hello, I'm Mr. Nate. Me, 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 me. It's time to laugh. I miss her right now. <laughs> Say hello to another Mexican beer. This is Sol. Which to me sounds like a washing detergent. And. Yeah, I spilled some beer on my leg just then. <sighs> Haven't drunk enough to make the whistle noise yet. Let's see what we can make of this second Mexican beer. Is it better than Corona? Is it worse than Corona? Let's find out. Again, I get the distinct feeling that it needs a lime shoved down its throat. What is it about Mexican beer that makes you want to improve them with citrus? It's a mystery. I think I'll need to plan a trip to Mexico to find out. Go to Mexico, drink all the beer I can possibly drink with citrus, preferably lime. The back of the box blurb says about it, Sol, Sol, Sol. Seriously, this says three times. We love your crisp, refreshing taste, your preference to be served ice cold, as all beer should, by the way. Yeah, I'm talking to you Americans. Ugh. Your clean, dry finish and your oh-so-stylish wedge of lemon or lime. See, I knew it. I knew it. Even the back of the box says so. Mexican beer deserves a bit of lime in it. Or lemon, if you're... A lemony type of person. Uh, stuck in your neck is the rest of the words that I didn't read before I stopped drinking. So there you go. I freaking knew it. Mexican beer. Citrus. It's a magic combination. And the first thing I said when I tasted it. Need citrus. <laughs> Say it with me now. Next beer. Actually, this is the tenth and final beer of the evening, which is um, Beck's. Delicious alcoholic beverages, by the way. And there you have it. Ten beers opened with two watch shapes. This one has actually held up completely firmly. And for the last few beers, I haven't been particularly careful with it. So I'm thinking that first breakage was... In fact, a fluke. So I'm going to finish this final of the ten international beers from around the world. As the world word international would, in fact, imply. And then tell you what I think about the f watch strap. Blind taste test? I would say that's a German beer. Couldn't tell you which German beer exactly. Particularly at this point of night where I've drank ten beers in about two hours. But it's definitely German. Let's see what the box says about Beck's, the German beer, brewed and bottled in Australia. 
Uh, Corona, Long Brown, Corona, Chang, uh, Bex. Germany's most popular export beer. So there's a warning sign right there because apparently Australia's most popular export beer would be like Foster's or something because, you know, we ship it all out to America and tell them it's Australian for beer, which is not because we don't drink it here. We ship it all overseas. So you dumb shits drink it. This refreshingly dry, crisp, and has an absolutely nothing to do with a certain famous tattooed English footballer. I don't get that, because I don't know shit about sports. Apparently there's an English footballer whose name is Bex. Oh, Beckham! The, the, spice, the guy who married the Spice Girl. Wow. <laughs> I am a massive dork. Shh, don't mention the war. Don't mention the war! I did once, but I think I got away with it. Ha ha, John Cleese reference, faulty towers. Well, alright then. That's the very last of the ten internationally beers drunk. And this to be honest, just so I could have an excuse to drink a lot of beers while reviewing a product. And the product was this thing, which is the Richard Tracy brand iPod Nano wristwatch slash bottle opener device available from ThinkGeek as I said somewhere close to the beginning of this video and quite frankly I'm happy with it despite destroying one with my clearly Herculean strength halfway through the test I managed to rip through the leather completely I'm leaning on the side of writing that off as some sort of stupid accident it's either my fault or a manufacturing defect because when you look at them, they look well built. They seem well built. I've been wearing this for uh, like 10 days or a week or something. And you know, I've been using the iPod Nano as a watch, which snaps in there very comfortably. It's nice to wear. And the iPod Nano, it, well, it works as a watch. I'm re the, the review is not really about how practical it is to wear an iPod Nano as a watch, but it's a kind of a cool thing. And you know, you've got the pedometer and on there and all the. But the fact is, the watch is made from real leather. It's comfortable and classy. The thing is made from stainless steel, so as long as you're not a brutally strong industrial strength moron like I am, you probably won't rip it in half. And it's kind of handy to have, because you're all, you know, if you're the type of person who wears a watch, and I'm not, I stopped wearing a watch a couple of years ago, quite honestly, because I moved to Brisbane, and then I would get a ridiculous watch tan, and I had to stop wearing a watch altogether. So now it's just my, my mobile phone, my iPhone, that I use as a watch. But if you do wear a watch, and you're the type of turbo geek who would want to use an iPod Nano as a watch, and this is worth checking out, because just on the off occasion where you need a bottle open and you don't have one, it's a nightmare of a situation, but you've always got a bottle opener with this. And as far as iPod Nano watches go, honestly, it does. It really does look... Let's see if I can get this around the right way to clip it back on there. It really does actually look quite nice. It's low profile, it's slimline, it's sort of classy and relaxed. It's not bulky, it doesn't add anything to the iPod Nano itself. It's, it works really lovely as a watch for this kind of device. So, now... Bowling it all down, and I know I'm sounding like I'm repeating myself again, but I am quite drunk at this point. I've had ten beers in less than a... Well, how long has it been? About two and a half hours. It's a lot of beers to have all at once on a virtually empty stomach, apart from the noodles I made, but I would recommend this. I'm going to email the guys and figure out how I managed to rip leather. Maybe it's just because I'm too tough. Bam! You know what I'm saying? Oh, I did not just say no what I'm saying. Oh, it's definitely time to go get some pizza. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Blonty, and I will catch you next time. Something beeped. Did you hear that beep? Something around here beeped.